Dr. Taboni, take us home, please, and talk about mid-season shoulder dislocations in elite athletes. Uh, thank you. Um, I better get, everyone's gotten 10, so I'm at a disadvantage here. But, <laughs> um, I have those disclosures. I just let, for the young surgeons in the group, if you want to take care of elite athletes, um, you give up a lot of things. You give up uh, time. You're on call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You miss a lot of your kids' events. So before you think about this, um, it may help your practice, but it's not going to help your personal life. Like right now, I do not take care of any more elite athletes, and yeah. I am much happier taking high school kids, college kids. All they want to do is play sport, and that's not their career. Anyway, that's just that. <laughs> okay, what about an elite high school athlete? We might, you could make this talk into one slide. Well. Why don't you just operate on it? Stupid, you know, really. But it's usually not an easy decision in mid-season. But in high school kids, um, they're usually out for the season because there's not many games left. And they'll still get a scholarship. When we see these kids in college, we want them to get operated on. And they'll still get their um, benefits, you know, the image and likeness benefits, so they're going to be rich anyway, but even before they graduate college. So usually on a high school kid, it's not a very hard decision. There's not many games left, so we operate on that shoulder after the first dislocation. Now, what about the college kids? Well, this gets a little more difficult. Um, they want to finish the season because there's more games left. It may affect their draft status, and they cannot perform in the NFL combine if they get surgery. So what you want to operate the shoulder because that's best, but most of the time they don't consent to that. And then you get to the NFL, and that's a really different animal. There's so many non-medical factors. You've got an agent, you have to deal with a coach, a general manager, an owner. There's non-guaranteed contracts mostly. What you read in the paper recently, that's not the usual deal for most of these people. There's rookie contracts, there's salary caps, there's franchise tags, and they get released if you don't help our team because of repeated injuries. So what is best for the shoulder is really not what the player wants. He wants to play no matter what the future will be uh, the, with the shoulder. Uh, he doesn't care about arthritis. A 20-year-old doesn't care. Oh, I'm going to have arthritis at 40. Well, I'm old at 40. I, I don't care about that. Why? He wants the big money. The NFL career is average. It's four years. He knows he can be released at any time. So it's really all about the money. Players like spending lots of money. They want to make it rain. They're 21, 22 years old. They're finally making millions of dollars. If you've ever been out with any of these guys, it's crazy, and, and I won't tell you the stories. <laughs> it's all about the bling. They like their jewelry, and it's expensive, and, and they all have it, so they want to play. So a minute season dislocation NFL, there's eight games left plus playoffs. Mid-season, most teams think they'll make the play season. Well, that's not kind of the Jets, Lions, and Jags. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about those guys who take, like those teams, but I was a Jets fan at one time. So a mid-season dislocation, we usually treat without surgery. You get an MRI to document the damage. It rarely would change your plan, but everyone wants it. You know, the player wants it, the coach wants it, no, everyone. So. Put the sling on for comfort, maybe for three days a week. We never put them in an external rotation brace, and we start rehab the next day. These guys have trainers. They, they work out every day. So they get, first you obtain near full range of motion. You strengthen the rotator cuff and scapula, normal. And then when they obtain full strength in the weight room, you avoid the military presses behind the head. They're ready to go. Um, so he can play when there's full motion and strength. And you, uh, these high-level players usually only miss three games with a, you know, a first-time dislocation. Um, so what's the non-operative management? Usually a restrictive brace. It limits abduction, external rotation, allows them, the athlete, to compete in season. How effective? Well, it's really not that effective. If you read mo most of the articles, two, half to two-thirds will have another event, but they'll still play through it. So here's one of the restrictor braces we used to you put a strap on their shoulder pads, and when they lift their arm, they don't go into full extension or full external rotation. And here's another type of sling that maybe you could use on an offensive lineman. So 
When do you operate before the end of the season? Well, when the player can't perform, if he feels like, well, I can't do it, so that's obvious you operate on. If there's a fracture of the glenoid with a large fragment greater than 20%, then you're going to operate on them. And possibly a Hegel lesion, because these things are really come out all the time. Hegel lesions, they're so unstable. So these are some times you may want to operate. So the skill letter matters. So what about Baker Mayfield? Let's take this case. So he has a first-time dislocation. It's his non-throwing shoulder. He plays with a brace. Okay, shoulder gets more injuries. He continues to play in pain. His performance is not good. Social media says he's not a franchise quarterback. Has surgery at the end of the season. The Browns trade for Deshaun Watson. His future is unknown, even if his shoulder does well. So this is what complicates all this stuff. And the NFL is a business. Players sacrifice their bodies for the money. And I'd like to congratulate the LA Rams, who my group takes care of them for the Super Bowl championship.